Angela from the website naturallivingalchemy.ca. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be making a calendula healing salve that can be added to your home medicine cabinet. And this salve will help you heal cuts, bumps, scrapes, and bruises. Because really, sometimes life happens, so why not be prepared? I do have an entire video on the art of making salves that I will uh, point you to if you are looking for more information on what they are, okay? Because I don't want to keep repeating all this information in these other videos, so I will point you in that direction. Now, also in the description box below, you're also going to find a couple links so that you can get some of these products for yourself so you can start making your own calendula healing salve for you or your family. Also in the description box, I have a full written blog article that just kind of goes over the information that I am presenting to you. So it's all just in one neat little place. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit more specifically about this healing salve. When would you use something like a calendula healing salve? Well, here's the thing. We're gonna talk a little bit about what this plant does. And then we are going to be able to see where we can apply it. So this salve has the ability to heal wounds and it can help facilitate healing and prevent infection. Now, I'm going to be a little bit more specific about that. You don't want to use it on a really deep, deep cut, okay? Because we're going to be adding beeswax to make the salve into an oil, okay? And you don't want something that's gonna be too, too heavy if you want to um, help heal a cut that, well, maybe you could just go get some stitches. You know what I mean? So this is going to be more so for everyday scrapes, cuts, and lacerations, maybe small puncture wounds or trauma to the skin. And we are going to include bruising and swelling from injury. Now, one thing that I've used this for was actually um, it was a bruise, and this helped the swelling of the bruise go down a lot faster than if I just would have left it on its own. And yeah, therefore it healed a lot quicker than if I just would have left it be. There's one more thing that you can use this healing cell for that I was very interested to learn, and I just want to share this information with you. Swollen lymph nodes. Now we're gonna get into the action of calendula in just a moment, and I hope that it's gonna make a little bit more sense. But if you have swollen lymph nodes, you could actually put this salve on it and it might help the swelling go down as well as drain the fluid as to why you were swollen in the first place. Now, before we get too much further in this, I do want to just give you my little disclaimer because of the platform that we are currently on. I am not a doctor. None of what is on this channel is medical advice. It is up to you to consult your health professionals before adding anything into your healing regimen. So now let's talk about what I like to call the primary actions of concern. And that is just really a fancy way of saying, what does she do? Where does she affect the body? and how does she do it? The first action of calendula is an alterative. So that means that it's something that actually can open up the channels of elimination in your body. Remember how I was talking just a second ago about how this could help with a swollen lymph node? That's why, that is one of the things that she does. Now, often when we hear the word alterative, we just think blood purifier. Now, while that is what it's doing, how it's doing it is what we really want to know. And the how is by opening up those channels of elimination in the body. Let's think channels of elimination would be, well, the first one that comes to mind is going to the washroom. Another one would be sweating. Perhaps crying is another one that I'm thinking about. Just different ways that fluids can leave your body, different ways that your body can help eliminate the things that is really just bogging it down. So the next action that I would like to talk about is astringency. So what an astringent plant will do is it will help heal a wound more rapidly. It will help prevent stagnation of fluid and it can modulate inflammation. 
Now you may, don't get confused with anti-inflammatory and inflammation modulating, okay? Because we really don't actually want to turn off the vital response of the body, which is inflammation. And really, if we are being honest, plants can't do that, okay? They can't just go into your body, turn off the inflammation key. But what they can do is modulate your inflammation. It can help your body just start to balance things out, okay? So while the inflammation's there because it's telling you something, the swelling, the pain, the things that are associated on that side of the spectrum can be dealt with. So astringent plants are very, very specific in treating damp heat, okay? So what do we think about when we damp heat? That would be swelling, pus, redness, and inflammation. So if any of those things are present, then this is the healing salve that you might want to grab. So the final action of concern that I would like to talk about and keep in mind, there are, there are more to what this plant does, but these are just the ones that we're concerned with today, is lymphagog. So whenever you see the word gog at the end of a word, um, G-O-G-U-E, that is telling you it is going to stimulate secretions. So a lymphagog would stimulate the secretions of the lymphatic system. So swollen lymph nodes are your body's way of showing you that it is in a heightened immunological activity that is including fluid stagnation and it is needing detoxification. Some of the affinities that calendula has, and affinities is just meaning where it's going in the body. It likes to work on the lymphatic and the immune system. It likes to work with the liver and the gallbladder, and it likes to work with the skin. So all of those are actually all part of your detoxification system within your body. Now, calendula is a warming plant. That's the temperature that it's going to do. It's going to warm the body up, all right? Now, the moisture component of this plant is its mixed moistening and drying properties. So it's going to help with drying out the, the um, stagnant fluid that is built up, that is causing your inflammation, that is causing your swelling, that's causing the pain and the redness. Okay. And it can actually help moisten things by getting those secretions going. Because sometimes we can have blocks in our lymphatic system, for example, and that's going to prevent things from draining out. Okay. But if things can start draining and they can start moving, you can get an overall moistening effect. So the planetary ruler of calendula is the sun. The, element, the elemental ruler is water. And the ruling principle is sulfur. Now, to go a little bit deeper into the planetary, the elemental, and the ruling principle, I'm going to send you to another video that I did on the alchemical map of creation that is just showing you basically the blueprint that I hold, that you hold, that the calendula plant holds, that everything that you see before you is a part of. So that's the first ingredient in our salve that we want to talk about. Now, the second thing is beeswax, okay? So beeswax does a couple different things to our skin. It can help the skin attract and retain moisture. It has antibacterial agents and has been used to treat cases of psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, boils, and wounds. It can help soften and lubricate your skin. It can help prevent water loss. And it also contains some antiseptic properties, which can help provide protective barriers to the skin. Beeswax is also rich in vitamin A. And what vitamin A does to our skin is it helps regenerate it after damage. Now, we do have a contraindication to when you would not want to use beeswax. And I kind of touched on that in the beginning. And that is if it is a very deep wound, because the wax is just going to seal the wound off and that could prolong its healing. OK, so maybe after the cut was it was done and maybe if it was a deep cut and you addressed that, but then after it was done bleeding, you still had some swollen 
it was still red, it was still sore, then I would add that in. I just don't want you to prolong your own healing by trying to speed up your healing. Paradox indeed, isn't it? Okay, so those are the two ingredients that we are going to be using in our salve today. And I have infused uh, calendula in an olive oil. So that's how I got this herbal infused oil. This one was made in my herbal infusing machine. It was infused for an hour and a half at 110 degrees. Now, if you don't have an herbal infusing machine, you can use the double boiler method. You will find video tutorials for both ways on this channel that I will have linked in the description box below. So we're going to be making one one ounce tin. If you wanted to make a bigger batch, you would go one cup of oil to every quarter cup of beeswax, okay? But again, since I'm only wanting to make this little one ounce tin, I'm going to be putting just under three quarters of an ounce of my oil. Uh, it works out to five tablespoons, okay? And to that, you add one and a half teaspoons of beeswax pellets or however you have your beeswax. If you have to grate it up, that's fine. But you just want to place those inside of a handy little double boiler that I found. And we're just going to allow these two ingredients to start to melt. So you could definitely add in some essential oils if you are wanting. Now, I prefer my things to stay unscented because sometimes, if we're being honest, different smells can be a little bit overwhelming to my senses. So I like to make things unscented when I can and then just maybe save essential oils for those special occasions. But it is completely up to you. So you would want to add your essential oils in after everything was already melted and um, right before you're ready to pour it in your container. So as you can see, once everything is all melted and incorporated together, you're just about done. So one very, very important thing that we want to do before we package up our healing cell is we wanna test it. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to tell you if you have a consistency you like. Now, the recipe I shared with you, I like the consistency that it comes in, but maybe you were wanting it to be a little bit softer, you would then add a little bit more oil, or if you want it a little bit firmer, you would add a little bit more beeswax. So how you test it is easy. So all you're gonna need is a plate and a spoon, and you're just gonna dish a little bit out onto your plate and then you're just going to put that in the freezer to let it set and leave it in there for one to two minutes and I will show you what that looks like. Okay so our cell was sitting in the freezer for about two minutes so as you can see we are completely set now and all you're going to do I just want you to touch it I want you to see if this is the proper consistency for what you're looking for. So what I'm getting with this is every time you rub it, a little bit is kind of coming on to your finger. And I think that this is a good consistency. Remember, if you want it to be a little bit softer, you're gonna just add more olive oil or whatever your infused oil is. If you want it a little bit firmer, you're just gonna add a little bit more beeswax and keep testing it until it is the consistency that you want. So since this is the consistency that I want, I'm just gonna put this little piece back. It's back in there. We're just gonna let that melt back in. All right, so then once everything is mixed back in and it is incorporated in itself, you are just going to get an oven mitt because that's a little warmer than you like. And then, um, you're just going to pour the cell into your things. Okay. 
this has been so wonderful. Um, just this little melting pot that I have, mainly because it just has a little spout. I was using just a normal bowl on my double boiler, which is fine too, because all we do around here is we work with what we have. So we are going to allow the salve to completely set and solidify. I like to just throw it in the fridge because I kind of like things to hurry up at times, right? So we are gonna let this sit back in the fridge and she will be ready to use. Now, one last thing that is very, very important. I finally got labels. You can continue to use the painter's tape if you want. I just finally planned a trip to Staples. So all you're gonna wanna write down on your label is you wanna write down what it is and you wanna write down the date. And then that's it. So the shelf life that you can expect for this cell is mm, with proper storage, at least a year, okay, months. So what does proper storage look like? Well, you wanna keep it in a dry, cool place and you wanna specifically keep it out of the sun. You might run the risk of something going rancid by allowing it to sit in the sun, right? So all you're gonna do is you're just always gonna make sure that the smell hasn't changed, that the color hasn't changed and that the texture hasn't changed. But to be perfectly honest, I generally go through these faster than they've spoiled. I've never actually had one go bad. All right, so that's it. That is how simple it is for you to make your own calendula healing cell. Comment down below and let me know when are you going to start making your own healing cells? What is a go-to healing cell that you have made that you just love to reach into that medicine cabinet when you need to use it? Just let me know. I would love to hear about it. That's it. That is how simple it is to make your own calendula healing cell for everyday cuts, scrapes, and bruises. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Let me know if this is something that you're gonna make for yourself and I just wanna hear about it. Don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with anybody who you might feel would enjoy it or benefit from learning how to make their own medicines. If you wouldn't mind, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe share this video with anybody who you feel might enjoy it. And consider subscribing to the channel so that we can spend more time together in future videos that I wanna to bring to you. And remember, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. So make sure that we can connect over there too. But until next time, I really wanna thank you for spending this time with me and may you find peace wherever you are.